Look, thank you for that introduction, Stephanie. I'm just going to bring up my slides, but as we do, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and uh, a little bit about uh, UNSW as a whole, which is obviously why you're here. So um, thank you all for, for joining today. Um, my presentation is just loading, so we'll just give it a moment. Um, as Stephanie said, my name's Nick, so I'm our Senior Recruitment Product Manager here for the University of New South Wales. And effectively, my role is to work very closely uh, with our Faculty of Science um, to promote our prospective students and, and uh, the parents of prospective students uh, who are joining us here today. And uh, obviously, uh, this is one of those opportunities where it, it's really your chance to, to grill me on, on all the questions you have about uh, what it's like to study at UNSW, um, the breadth of science offerings that we have. And we have a huge amount of, of degrees and programs. And it's it's not possible to cover them all in, in this kind of 25-minute uh, session today. So I'm going to really do a deep dive into a few um, emerging and, and key areas uh, that are extremely popular with our, our students at the moment. Um, but it'll also be a chance to cover off what uh, some of the careers of the future look like. So um, I'm going to share my, or I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Let's see. Let's see if I can share. Uh, Stephanie, do you mind just giving me access to share my screen, if that's okay? I don't think I have access. Sure. Just one minute now. No worries. Oh, sorry, can you see at the bottom if you have the option for sharing screen? Uh, oh, yeah, answer? no, it's, pop it's, it's popped up now. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. All right, there we go. So hopefully everyone can see... See that now, uh, can see the slide deck. If you can't, uh, apologies, let me know. Um, but let's, uh, let's kick things off. So as I said, we're really gonna focus on uh, a deep dive into uh, UNSW in terms of our, our offerings, but also really what the, the future of uh, STEM looks like. So um, Stephanie, give me a yell if you can't see uh, that slide, but hopefully, hopefully that's working. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, to, sorry, Stephanie, is that working on your own? Yes, it is. Excellent, brilliant. All righty, so a couple of key global employment trends I wanted to cover off. Um, and this is really looking at the macro level. So the care economy is absolutely huge at the moment. So health and well-being and the amount of data that goes into that is growing at a, an increasingly and, and really immense uh, rate of change. Um, and it means, you know, science and, and medicine work very closely together as, um, as you know, in terms, of, in terms of offerings. And it's really the, the nature of um, the fact that, that they are entwined. A lot of what we do in the medical sciences feeds into the clinical practice that those on the front line in medicine uh, do, but also a lot of the, the, uh, the population health uh, trends that we see they equally feed into the kind of research and insights and are born from the kinds of insights uh, that we see coming out from um, you know, all of the, the scientific research that underpins the best practices. And we've seen that on a global scale with the, the COVID pandemic. Um, in terms of the transferable skills side of things, I mean, we know that this is huge. Everyone hears about this and we, we try to embed this across all of our degrees. And it's really making sure that you're prepared, not just for that first, uh, career and first, you know, job that you've got straight out of university, uh, but really to be able to ensure that you're prepared for everything that comes after that, that second, third, fourth uh, degree afterwards. Um, and as we all know as well, the acceleration of, of and di you know, that digital transformation, the fact that we're doing these remotely, I'd love to be obviously, uh, you know, here with you in person, but the fact that we do all of this stuff remotely now and that we need to be able to adapt to that is really, really significant, and really important. Um, so, all of those elements are, are really key, but when we look at this, at, at, you know, I'm gonna use Australia as an example because you know, it's obviously where we're dialing in from, but it's very much reflective of that global perspective. Um, some of the, the growing industries in Australia, the, the fastest that we're seeing are things like the professional and scientific and technical skills services, healthcare, education and training, uh, construction, energy management, retail trade, um, finance and insurance, and, I think what this, this tells us is that a lot of this is underpinned by science and STEM in general. And so there's a huge growth and, and uh, you know, drive into these areas. But you know, personally, what I'd say to, to those of you who are on the call, you're here because you're interested in uh, science, you're passionate about science and uh, technology and engineering. 
Um, and so really it is about harnessing that and working out, well, what is that career going to look like when you graduate? And we'll make sure that you've got the skills to, to excel and, and have a phenomenal career, but it is about harnessing that passion and knowing that at the moment, STEM careers are, are really the, the fastest growing careers that we're seeing across the board. Um, we're seeing as well, uh, you know, a whole bunch of these general skills that are very important for, for people to have um, across all of their degrees. So things like teamwork, skills, uh, emotional intelligence and resilience, and they're really uh, pivotal because they, they drive, you know, they, they really drive any kind of teamwork and, and behavior. Um, and that they'll help you excel. And so we don't just build the, the STEM skills and the scientific skills that are really important, but we make sure that you're prepared with those broader skills you know, to be able to work effectively in a team, to be a leader and stand up and, and project manage an initiative. Um, and it's, it's really about balancing all of that across uh, your entire degree and then what that looks like afterwards. So I'm going to pose to you now, what does a scientist look like? Now, you might have someone in, in mind. It might be someone standing in the laboratory in a lab coat. It's quite a common image that comes to mind for a lot of people. Um, it might be uh, someone working uh, with telescopes, someone working maybe as a biologist out in uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a greenhouse, as an example. And look, I think they're fairly common and stereotypical examples, but the reality is that actually scientists work across every single industry. And it is a, a bit of an example here. I've got a montage of images that shows you that the, the, the fact is that you do work across every single industry, everything from you know, aviation and aviation management um, through to more traditional careers along the research pathway, um, working across manufacturing, working in business and the financial services, um, you know, working in, in psychology and counseling, but also leveraging those skills to work in areas that are complementary, like marketing, human resources. The fact of the matter is that scientists and science graduates, they work across every single industry. So by doing a, a science degree and, and harnessing the fact that you've got this passion for science, you're actually opening yourself up to any of these careers. You're, you're able to work across such a diverse range of, of areas. And yeah, that might be daunting. And, and I think that, that that's a fair, fair thing to feel. If you don't, you know, you love science, but you don't know where it's going to take you, it can be a bit daunting. But I can tell you that, you know, at UNSW and, and again, many other universities, there's always a lot of opportunities, particularly through initiatives like at UNSW, the Careers and Employability Office, to get with employers in the industry from the get-go. So we, we do you know, CV and uh, interview workshop classes. We do networking events all the time with employers from not just the scientific industries, but much broader than that. So that you can get a feel for what the nuances are of all of these different roles and the opportunities that are out there so that you can then build that into you know, the particular career that you're going to go down. So to sum things up in terms of some of those key insights, I guess I really want to stress modern scientists work across everywhere, you know, every single industry. And it's because you bring unique problem solving and analytical skill sets to the, to, to the problems that you're looking to solve and, and to the, the teams that you're a part of. And, you know, the other element is that STEM jobs is far outpacing, um, you know, in terms of its growth, far outpacing non-STEM occupations. So it is really pivotal that we get uh, students into these programs and graduates you know, out, into the workforce because there are skill shortages out there for those who are you know, technically qualified, um, but, but you know, that might just be in a particular area. And we're going to do a deep dive momentarily into maths and statistics as an example, um, but, but it can also be just that broader scientific skill set because you do bring those problem solving skills to play and it's really, really important. So look, I want to dive into a few different areas today um, to highlight some of the programs we offer. Now, again, we offer you know, over 300 degrees at UNSW and at a, um, a level of science, we actually offer well over um, 60, 70 degrees. So it's a huge number. So we can't cover all of them, um, but I'm going to cover some of the key ones that you might be thinking about. And I encourage you to jump onto our degree finder if you're thinking about um, any others, or you want to do a bit of exploring to work out which might be the right path for you. So we'll do a deep dive now into maths, stats, and data science. Now, 
some of the post-COVID trends that we're seeing here is, is the importance of data literacy. And the, you know, there's a, a couple of quotes here uh, on the screen um, that talk about how data literacy is, is pivotal. The, the growth of data, just as an example, in health, for example, health data um, doubles every three months. Now that, that's a huge rate of data. Think about the Fitbits that you might have and the, the, you know, the smartwatches and that and the amount of health um, information that they're tracking. Well, look, it means that, that there is so much health information out there that it has to be harnessed in a way which is useful. So data science um, and you know, mathematics and statistics as well, because it all feeds in together, um, are really so just finding the information, we've got lots of it. It's about turning that into something meaningful so that you can make a decision, that you can make some kind of, of change as a result. Um, so it really is about, you know, as we see on the screen here, defining, analyzing, solving those complex um, financial and, and business problems. But it, it's also about having the, the models to underpin that and, and really to be able to understand how to apply that to the real world. People think, oh, I do, I'll do mathematics because yeah, I, I love mathematics, but I don't quite know where it's gonna lead me. Well, I can tell you our mathematics graduates, they work for Google, they work for Ernst & Young, they work for um, you know, not-for-profit organizations, they work for government because the data literacy, the, the importance of mathematics underpinning a huge amount of decision-making these days is something that really can't be underestimated. So. If you're thinking about undergraduate study, for example, then at UNSW, you might think about doing a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Advanced Science Honours um, and then doing a major within that. Um, you can do up to two majors within those programs. Um, the Bachelor of Science is a three-year degree. The Bachelor of Advanced Science Honours is a four-year degree. And it's really for those students that want to push themselves and challenge themselves even further. Um, you'll do a fourth year of honours where you do a major research project. Um, and it really will extend your knowledge, build some really critical research skills. Um, and then as a result, it, it often can make students you know, even more employable um, relative to the other science graduates that are going out there because you actually do have that higher level knowledge. In fact, you, you've contributed to the body of knowledge that's out there through your independent research. Um, you could also look at doing something like a Bachelor of Science Advanced Mathematics. This gives you the, the chance to really do a lot more mathematics than you could do in, say, the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Advanced Science Honours. Um, and it, again, it includes that, that fourth year of honours, so you will do a major research project as well. For those who want to specialise in data science and decisions, we have the Bachelor of Data Science and Decisions and also a Master of Data Science and Decisions. The fact of, of the way in which these are taught is that they're, they're designed to take you end to end. So from sourcing the data through to analyzing the data, having the computational um, you know, software and, and capabilities to be able to analyze it, and then to be able to make decisions. And that's a really important skill set because it makes you highly employable when you're working in, uh, say, you know, a, a business. Uh, you know, it could be any kind of um, commercial organization because you can actually go end to end um, from you know identifying problems through to solving and then providing recommendations to the senior management about how to solve that so um, a really important uh, set of skills I can see we've got questions coming in as well um, that is brilliant keep throwing questions in I'm happy to answer them um, and I'll leave time at the end as well um, in terms of prerequisites uh, look, I mean, it, these degrees really, um, there's no subject prerequisites for, for any of our undergraduate degrees, so any of our bachelor's degrees, for example. Um, it doesn't matter what you've studied as your background, um, say in high school, what we're looking for is, is your, your academic potential. So we'll be looking at your grades that you've achieved. Um, and the best thing to do is actually to go onto our degree finder. So just type in UNSW degree finder into Google or your preferred search engine. Um, and you can jump onto uh, those pages and you can actually see what the equivalencies are based on the qualifications that you've studied. So um, based on you know, the area that you're in, um, in terms of, uh, you know, dialing in, say, from Singapore, um, you can then have a look at the equivalent qualifications. If you're applying for master's programs, say our Master of Data Science and Decisions or our Master of Maths or our Master of Stats, typically you have to have done um, reasonably high level uh, mathematics studies in your undergraduate degree um, and that's just to ensure that you've got the the capability to be able to succeed and thrive in that so um because there's too many to cover here i'm not going to go into too much detail but as i say um i'll, I'll post a link to our degree finder shortly 
Um, but you can also just, yeah, you can Google that um, and reach out to our team at any time. If you've got an idea of, look, I'm thinking about doing maths and thinking about doing data science, we can always um, work with you to, to work out that exact pathway for you. I'm going to dive into the next area um, in the interest of time. Uh, I know it's already uh, 7, 18, 7, 19. Uh, here in Sydney, where I'm dialing in, uh, the two hours behind uh, where you are, so about 5.19. Um, we're going to cover aviation, and I'm going to talk about the general sciences, um, and then we'll have some time for questions. So aviation, we know that this industry has been significantly impacted by um, everything that's gone on uh, on the COVID front in terms of um, just the financial impact um, to the, the travel services sector. Um, but it's Look, I mean, it, it, you know, on the flip side, it's it's also really just it, it, it changes. We're seeing a change of pilots. Um, as older pilots take redundancy packages, we're seeing um, you know different trends in terms of air cargo. So the fact that people are, um, say, buying um, a huge amount of stuff online and getting it delivered through services like, say, Amazon. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it's changing the nature of, of what is required for, for aviation as a whole. So um, decision making and human factors are really important. It's much more than just being a pilot and flying. Um, but, but, you know, on the flip side as well, it's having a full understanding of, of aviation safety laws and regulations. And that's what's going to help people navigate that pathway. So um, in terms of getting there with, with us, you might think about doing a Bachelor of Aviation Flying or a Bachelor of Aviation Management. Um, you might think about doing uh, a master's program in one of those areas if you are, um, you know, if you've been doing, say, uh, well, you might be working already in the aviation industry or the travel industry, or even another industry in general, and you want to, uh, you know, change careers and, and professions. Um, and we have a graduate diploma as well in that. So really those two streams, aviation uh, flying and aviation management. Um, I mean, our graduates work across uh, a lot of the major air, airways and airlines um, around the world. Um, a lot of them work for, say, Qantas, which is our, our national airline carrier here in Australia. Uh, but they also work for research and development companies. They work for um, you know, the air and aviation uh, transport safety authorities. So they provide a lot of guidance, counselling, um, you know, and, and management expertise as well. So um, really diverse career pathways there. Um, the final thing I'll talk about is the, the general sciences. And so this is really important because as I said, science graduates think in a very unique way. You think about, you know, your problem solving skills, your critical thinking skills, um, you know, being able to identify problems, get the, the you, know, you know, quantify uh, the data, um, but then, then you know, have that next level of analysis, which you overlay uh, and then can, can provide you know, recommendations as a result. That whole end-to-end -end cycle, similar to you know, that data science and decision cycle I was talking about before, um, is, is a really unique set of skills. Um, and from a post-COVID uh, perspective, or you know, as we move kind of a... ...becoming kind of the new norm, um, increasingly, uh, you know, having a flexible skill set is really important. It's going to be you know, increasingly important across all labor markets because we're going to have to be able to balance many different career pathways that we'll go through throughout our careers. Um, and the, the you know, continuing growth in areas like healthcare and aging pop populations um, means that you know, medical sciences, for example, uh, pathology, immunology, virology, um, a lot of those um, sciences that underpin medicine and healthcare are becoming increasingly important um, because it just means that you've got, uh, I guess, a, you know, a really strong uh, supporting basis um, to provide the best possible care for our populations. So there's many ways that you might do a general science degree. And this is the one that I recommend um, for those who are interested in science, they're passionate about science. Um, you know, I really recommend you consider doing something broad like a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Advanced Science Honours. I mentioned those earlier. You can see how many majors are available in those programs. Um, but also, you know, we've got a Bachelor of Life Sciences for those who want to specialise in that. Um, Science International, which includes uh, an exchange uh, opportunity for a, a year. So you'll do a mandatory one year exchange overseas. You could do an exchange in the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Advanced Science Honours as well, but this is a mandatory exchange. Um, and the Bachelor of Science in Business for those who um, want to build some really foundational business knowledge as well and might want to go down the entrepreneurial route. So 
I know we've only got a few minutes left in this session, so I'm going to just wrap up by talking about the, the breadth of opportunities really that there are for those students who are studying in science at UNIS. I mean, we've got thousands of students who are studying in science at both the undergraduate and the postgraduate level. Um, and they, they all have access to over 400 industry partners. You can see just a, a smattering of them there on the screen. There's many opportunities to do things like work integrated learning, which is where uh, you'll do an internship, say for a marketing company, and it counts back towards your, uh, your, your degree. So it might count towards you know, a six credit point uh, you know, unit of study. So it actually formally is gonna be on your testament that you did that. Um, but it, you, know, you could be working two days in the city, uh, for a marketing company and you might be leveraging your psychology skills to be able to you know build that out and think about where your psychology program is going to take you uh, we also have research integrated learning and so that's where we build research opportunities into our degree there's many opportunities both within the degree and outside of the degree you can get involved with you some internship opportunities of our academics for doing a research integrated unit or an honors year where you actually do a full major project contributing to the body of knowledge out there. Our student community is, is equally really an important part of what you'll get up to um, within uh, you, you know, UNSW science and within your degree because it is about balancing your studies with the development you get outside of the classroom. And so um, you can see just a small number of our, our 300 plus uh, clubs and societies at UNSW. These are just some about science ones, for example, but you're going to make lifelong friends, but equally lifelong connections um, throughout your, your studies. So these people will be those people who, you know, they'll be your friends throughout your degree and, and the rest of your career, but they'll also be your support network as you transition into the workforce. You'll know people across many different industries as a result, um, and you'll be surprised how often you rely upon them um, as you navigate through your career. So it's great to have those connections and build them from the get-go. And it, it really is a supportive community at UNSW. We're trying to push the boundaries, um, you know, across a huge number of uh, a huge number of areas um, across the sciences. We've actually got seven of our, our subjects ranked in the top 50 in the world. So um, there's a huge amount of incredible research that you get access to and that our academics bring into the classroom on a daily basis, sometimes before it's even been published. So um, it's an exciting and, and uh, you know, it, it is challenging. We're going to challenge you. We'll open up your worldview and, and you know, you'll find it a very rewarding experience as a result. So it's an incredible place to be. And I guess as we wrap up, I really just want to restress again that our graduates go on to work across the globe uh, in, in pretty much every industry. That is the nature of a, a science degree. That's what makes it so incredible. So I really do encourage you, you're here because you've got a passion for science. Um, continue to, to nourish that passion. Um, you know, it, it's really important to if you're in high school still, think about what you can, you can do to extend your studies and get involved in, in your know, competitions and extra projects. Um, and you'll see how that translates to your studies at university. It gives you an edge when it comes to things like scholarship applications. Um, but when you get to university, my best piece of advice really is just to get involved. Um, opportunities breed opportunities and you might not be able to see what those opportunities are on the horizon but by getting involved in say some of the club and societies you'll see how that opens up a whole bunch of different networks of opportunities and maybe you know part-time jobs um, extra projects you can get involved with and then that might lead to actually a full-time job when you when you graduate and it might lead to you know the next step in your career and working out which avenue you want to go down so it really is about taking those opportunities we'll support you along the way of course um, but take those opportunities and, and really enjoy the the journey as well so look that that is it for me um hopefully a bit of a, a, a jam-packed uh session there where we've kind of covered off some of the the you know latest careers in stem and some of the key trends that we're seeing and how you might be able to harness them yourself um, but you know i really encourage you reach out to our team um, we're always happy to, to, to chat with students um, and our, our contact details, um, I don't have them on the screen, unfortunately, but I will post them in the chat in just one, <laughs> one second. So let me just cancel uh, my screen sharing for a moment. I'll give you the details of our, our team. Obviously, you know, we're, we're here at this event, um, but it, it is about, uh, you know, making sure that you're taking those steps to work out what is going to be the, the right career for you. And so I'll, I'll send you the details of our team uh, because we, we'd love to hear from you. So I, I, I really, uh, you know, to wrap up there, I guess I want to encourage you all to, to think about, you know, how you can harness uh, some of the emerging trends that we're seeing, but uh, 
equally, um, you know, and here is the link. Um, equally, I, I wish you all the very best for it. I, you know, it's a, an incredible journey and there's some incredible uh, developments that are going on within the sciences at the moment. So um, from, uh, you know, the team here at UNSW, uh, thanks for having us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and we wish you all the very best for, for what comes next. So, uh, yeah, if there's no more questions, uh, thanks again for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Nicholas. No worries. Students and parents, uh, thank you for attending today's session. So if you have any questions, uh, please visit to uh, the university booth and our launch uh, and start to chat with the, uh, with the university representative for a one on one session. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good one. Cheers.